How goes the family? Welcome back to Larry's Anything Goes. Hopefully you guys are having a great and exceptional day. But this is an interesting article that I came across the other day because usually the media does a great job of demanding, of uh, basically not demanding, but demeaning uh, any and basically all rappers in uh, yesterday, today, and definitely tomorrow's world. Today I'm going to talk about a good old 3-6 Mafia, 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 from the good old Memphis, Tennessee, uh, with Like to Drink Hennessy. Um, their underground music success has toppled the music charts, especially with hit songs like Who Run It, Chicken Head, Sipping On Some Scissor, and so many more. The article stated that uh, cultural critic Kiana Fitzgerald has chosen 3-6 Mafia's uh, debut album, Mystic Styles, as one of hip-hop's hip uh, game-changing moments. This album is in some ways the beginning of the darker side of hip-hop, says Fitzgerald. It's a prime example of Subgen, they helped to popularize uh, known as horror, horrorcore rap music. And I'm definitely a fan of horrorcore hip hop with uh, such acts um, that I knew of, that I knew of Esham. And I remember 36 Mafia actually gave respect to Esham because they liked a lot of his underground. He's an underground artist from Detroit, Michigan. Um, and then they've done songs with um, artists like Insane Clown Posse and Twisted. Um, you know, people like the Dayton's family. You know, that's all horrorcore uh, music, especially from back in the 90s. If you, um, the 80s, 90s time frame. If you, um, I mean, that's what a lot of uh, uh, successful rappers, for the most part, well, a lot of rappers out of Detroit were even known as horrorcore rappers. Um, so, and of course you had horrorcore rappers that'll come from everywhere, but I'm just talking about the 80s and 90s time frame and the way that um, Ishan got his, Isham got his name out there was, um, was through the underground. And, you know, like I said, he performed with acts like Insane Clown Posse, um, uh, Kid Rock, et cetera, and so forth. But I remember reading, uh, this is back in the days when we didn't even have apps, so you had to go, you had to actually go to um, the rappers when they had their websites. You know, they still have them to this day, but, you know, everybody's on Instagram and TikTok and whatnot. But I remember they were talking about the story, their hustle, how they would go to um, gas stations to sell their music. They go to specific parties and parking lots throughout the city of Memphis. And um, they got a lot of their game from uh, Esham and how he did his uh, music. So, um, you know, it's all good in the neighborhood. But anyways, however, 3-6 Mafia gained more commercial success through their album When the Smoke Clears. Because uh, that's actually when the first time I actually heard them. Uh, the article also stated that the members of the 3-6 Mafia had an outright obsession with slasher films like Friday the 13th, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and Halloween which Fitzgerald says inspired their chilling, th uh, threatening verses. Like this one from the song, Live By Your Rep, I Shall Take a Thousand Razor Blades and Press Them in Your Flesh, Take My Pitchfork Out the Fire, Soak It in the Chest. It's not for the faint of heart, advises uh, Fitzgerald. Uh, Mystic Styles also provided a preview of, preview to the crunk music that later became, that uh, would later dominate hip hop coming out of the South at that time. Uh, Fitzgerald described their songs, Tear the Club Up. Um, and I remember hearing that song later, but that's on my playlist when I go work out. One of the most interpolated reworked flip songs in hip hop history. And Tear the Club Up was actually the second hit song that I, like I said, I heard from um, 3 Six Mafia. The first song I actually heard from them, it wasn't Who Run It. I think it was actually, um, I think it was actually Sipping on Some Scissor. Which I didn't like because I thought it was, I mean, I like it now, but I didn't really like it because, um, you know, I thought it was a little too slow for me. And back when I was in, you know, back when I was in high school, I was all about the underground. So I didn't even realize, even though 3 Six Mafia was becoming mainstream, they still did a great job of keeping themselves from an underground standpoint, you know, with their music. They'd have the hit songs, but then if you listen to the whole albums, because that's what you did back then, you didn't just listen to the two or three songs, um, that's when you would go crazy. Um, but anyways... And in the beginning, like I said, I wasn't a fan of the music until they made it. They actually made a song with Insane Clown Posse and Twisted called Just Another Crazy Click because I was in high school. And back then, like I said, I wasn't a big fan of commercial rap music at the time. So, you know, I started listening to artists like Cannabis. I started listening to artists like Tech 9 um, You know, I grew up on the East Coast, so nobody was listening to the West Side Connect Gang uh, connection. Uh, connect Gang, Connect Gang, like I was, you know. I was dressed wearing khakis, um, you know, I was, I had shirts made with MAC-10 on it, Old Dirty Bastard on it, with Method Man on it, you know what I mean? So I wanted to stand out, you know, as a teenager. I always, as, as I've always dressed, I've always wanted to stand out no matter what the situation may be. So that's just how I've always been, you know. 
but I digress. Uh, but anyways, um, like I said, I lost my train of thought. But anyways, uh, the article ended on this note stating that DIY success inspired creators all over the country to try to make it on their own. Keanu Fitzgerald says 36 Mafia laid the groundwork for the late 2000s to the mid 2010s. Um, and that was one of the more exciting times in contemporary hip hop. It also inspired the SoundCloud rap music, rap movement. movement. They did it with uh, what they had in their pocket and in their mind and in their heart. And they were successful because they wanted to create something that really spoke to their region and their lifestyle. Also, 36 Mafia also inspired more and more people to <clears throat> approach the hip hop careers from an underground and ownership mindset all at the same time. Because that's the beautiful thing about in the last uh, 20 years, a lot of artists have, you know, because of social media, and because of the internet, a lot of artists have been able to get their music out there even much more faster, much more quicker because you talk about a time frame when um, artists like 36 Mafia, they had to go city to city, state to state to get their music heard. They had to deal with the radio stations. You know, they had to, they had to fight through, uh, um, you know, especially coming at the time coming from the South, especially coming from Tennessee. You know, because, you know, during the 90s, you know, um, most people, when they thought about Southern hip hop, they weren't thinking about um, tennis, Memphis, Tennessee. They were thinking about Atlanta, Houston, and Miami and New Orleans. I will say that, but m mostly Atlanta and Houston and Miami. Miami with the loop uh, genre, Atlanta because of Outkast and um, the Dungeon family. Houston because of the Ghetto Boys, Jay Prince, you know, and all those people. So... Um, so coming out of Tennessee, you know, they really had to, you know, stand up and stand out, you know, and the fact that even 36 Mafia has a great relationship with Bone Thugs. So I remember one time they had a beef with Bone Thugs and Harmony, but, um, but they, that got squashed. And even they, when they were able to do the, um, the verses, uh, two years ago, I can't believe it's been two years ago. That was, that, that was a beautiful thing. And the fact that it was in Inglewood, California made it even better, but it was a great, um, great camaraderie. And even though they had a spat because of Busy Bone. They worked it out, they shook hands, and they showed love. So that's why I got nothing but love and respect for 36 Mafia. Like I said, when they first came out, wasn't that big of a fan, but you can't, you can't ever, ever, never deny the production. You can never deny the, um, the great lyrics. You can never deny them being them. So that's what I got to say about that. Don't forget to check out Larry's Anything Goes online store. We got a variety of financial intelligence products. Greatly appreciate it. Go to the store from there. If you're a stock market investor, crypto investor, and virtual retirement account investor, don't forget to check out Weevil Stash, Acorns, Crypto.com, Coinbase. Plus, with all those specific um, platforms, you'll be able to make some money moves. And we're also part of the Coast Partners. We not only have the opportunity to buy a cryptocurrency, but you have the opportunity to um, refer others to do the same thing and go from there. So, as always, say, Remember, you can't get fired if you own the company. 36 Mafia's done a great job of making money moves throughout the music industry. And they're not worried about getting fired anytime soon. Do great three free things. Like, share, and subscribe. Have a great day. Make money moves so you're going to live right like a fool. Take care, family.